Hey there, it's time once again for the Meaningful Measurable Marketing Podcast. I'm Jen Carroll. And I'm Annalisa Hilliard. Together, we are the Dames of Data Dames Marketing. As the Dames, Jen and I are marketing strategy consultants who help our clients align marketing, business goals, and measure results that matter. As longtime friends, we avidly consume and critique all kinds of drinks, spend as much time outdoors as possible, and are always learning. We also strive to stay on top of what's happening in our industry. Our goal with this podcast is to look at today's biggest marketing trends, many requiring enterprise-level teams and budgets to fully implement, and try to apply them in ways that make sense for small to mid-sized businesses. We hope you'll subscribe to our podcast and leave us a review. You can connect with Jen and me via our website, datadamesmarketing.com, or on LinkedIn, where we do most of our social media networking. This podcast features an interview Annalise and I recorded in November 2020 with our intern, Abby Schof. Abby is an English and creative writing major at Malone University, which is where we data dames received our bachelor's degrees. Even though there are references to Christmas time beverages, the heart of this episode is timeless. Writing is a critical skill for most careers, including marketing. In fact, she recently wrote a blog post about that, and I'll include a link to it in the show notes. I love Abby's way of looking at the intersection of design thinking, creative thinking, and strategic thinking, which is something I've been pondering a lot lately myself. An added bonus in this episode for those who market to college-age students and young professionals, Abby talks about what themes and messages resonate with her right now. Without further ado, here's our interview with Abby. Welcome to the morning show with Jen and Annalisa, the Data Dames, and today we have a special guest. Abby Shove. <laughs> Good morning, Abby. Good morning. Uh, Abby is a student at Malone University and a very special student to us because she is our intern. And so today we're going to give her a chance to share her perspective. Well, hey, Abby, we're going to start with our favorite segment. Now, I guess it shouldn't be our favorite segment, but it's pretty awesome. It's the what are you drinking <laughs> segment. So tell us, what are you drinking today or what have you been drinking in recent days? Now you're not 21, so. We understand. Mm-hmm. It won't right. be too interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've just got my International Delight iced coffee with Ooh. me this morning. Whoa. That's what it's called. <laughs> wow. Where do you get that at Malone? <laughs> um, I bought it from Walmart. Oh, is, it, is that like a, is that like the creamer thing? Like, yeah. It's one of those like big cartons of coffee that already oh, has yeah. creamer in it. Yeah. Yeah. It's like sugar plum fairy. Yeah. Kind of like that. And like gingerbread, <laughs> gingerbread pumpkin spice latte. So, oh yeah. So you probably, fancy. you probably don't even need to eat the rest of the day. That will just keep you going. <laughs> Whoa. Well, let's see. Today we are, and Lisa and I are back drinking our usual, our cherry blend. But Mm -hmm. um, what have we been drinking in recent days that we should highlight? Oh, last night we had a um, a corn whiskey that was uh, hot pepper corn whiskey. And and I mixed it with ginger beer. And it was, it was actually really good. I was, I was hesitant. It was, but I was hesitant, but Once I, you know what? I should garnish that with like a jalapeno or something. Um, extra hot. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, it just highlights what's in the drink. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> when you're 21, Abby, we'll let uh-huh. you. Yeah. We'll we'll make you one of those. Yeah, you'll have to come back. <laughs> you'll have to come back to day to day, and we're gonna. Yeah, we'll. Right. We'll set you up. I'll be back next month. Okay. <laughs> okay, but not 21 yet. <laughs> I'll be 21 next month. Oh, oh my! Really? Are you yeah. kidding? Oh, we're so excited. Oh, well, I guess wow. you will be coming back yes. for the spring semester. All right. <laughs> this, spring, this like adds a whole new dimension. Yeah. That's the other deal of my next internship. Absolutely. <laughs> I think you picked the right internship. <laughs> so too. So we didn't really think this out very well. Who is our small business shout out today? Abby, do you have a small business yeah. in Canton that you like to support? Um, I know we've talked about walkie talkie in the past. Oh yeah. I'm not sure if you guys have given them a shout out. I think before. we have. No, no, I don't think we have. That's a that's awesome. Yeah. That's one of my favorite coffee shops in Canton and it's really close to Malone. I can walk there in just a few minutes. It's awesome. Yeah. Um so yeah, my friends and I we love walkie talkie in Canton. Uh, but they don't have the international coffee 
creamer there. They're like <laughs> they're like the real deal. They are the real deal yeah. there. They uh they have their eggnog latte out now. Oh, do they? Yeah. Are you into that? I'll totally try it. Okay. Yeah, well, and even better, the eggnog, they get it from Hartzler's Dairy, which is yeah nearby and it's amazing mm-hmm. i am not an eggnog fan at all or at least i have not been in the past until i tried hartzler's it's just mind-blowing yeah. so it is worth the oh. worth, worth a try and i think that the owners are malone grads yes at least mm, i don't know i think so Lindsay. oh so. the owners yeah I thought, yeah uh the owners of walkie talkie <laughs> are absolutely malone grads yes yeah. so we have a little malone thing going today Pretty awesome. We can give a little shout out to our alma mater. There we Yay, go. Hooray. <laughs> so let's dive in a little bit this morning with Abby. Are you ready? I'm ready. All this right. is like a game show. Oh. Well, <laughs> we, let's give you, let's give Are Abby. Are you ready to start? Who wants to be a millionaire? Uh, well, she's. <laughs> no lifelines, though. <laughs> no 50 50s. All right. Well, Abby, tell us about your background and. Um, and your major at Malone, because it was uh, a little unusual, I think, for you to maybe reach out to Data Dames. All right. Well, um, I'm a junior right now at Malone University, and I'm an English and creative writing double major. I never really had a certain particular plan of what I wanted to do with my major. I just knew that I loved literature, and Mm -hmm. I've always loved writing various genres, fiction, historical fiction, and nonfiction as well, poetry. I just never knew really what I wanted to do with it. One of my professors, Steve Jensen, he had hooked me up with a list of ideas of different companies and organizations in Canton of places to just look into on my own to do research on and just to kind of get a feel for what kinds of job opportunities there are for English majors. Um, Because I think a lot of us, we kind of assume if you're studying English, you're going to teach or you're yeah. going to try to be an author. Mm-hmm. And I say try to be because, <laughs> you know, we all have this dream of being a big writer and mm-hmm. very few of us really will be the next JK Rowling or mm-hmm. uh, what have you. Right. So, um, yeah, I had looked around at different companies, just kind of getting a feel of what the workplace is like for people fresh out of college and um, decided it was about time for an internship. <laughs> I looked into a few places and, I heard about this place called Data Dames. <laughs> I was like, what is that? That's very interesting. Um, was it the name? I, was it the name? Of, yes, was like, I actually, <laughs> yeah. I was compelled. I was like, What's, what is this all about? <laughs> um, and I wasn't really expecting to land an internship with you guys. I was thinking, you know, I don't have a lot of experience at all in marketing. I hadn't taken marketing courses. I'm not Uh, majoring in business or marketing. And so I wasn't really sure how this would fit in um, to my major. But as I did more research, I came to find that a lot of people who study English do pursue careers in the business world, specifically in marketing with public relations and communications. It's pretty, um, they coincide pretty well together. Because if if you are a good writer and a good reader, you have a lot of the critical thinking skills necessary to be able to have clear communication in the workplace. Mm-hmm. And um, that's a skill that I think every business and every company needs more of. I think as an English major, really, I'm a lot more marketable than maybe I thought. Jen, um, can you relate to I was, I was gonna to being say, an English major? Yes, I was going to say that's, you know, uh, when we interviewed you, Abby, of course, that was... Uh, that was a, a key part to, to winning us over because yeah. when we... Because uh, <laughs> when... We, yeah, we weren't looking for an intern as, you know, as you mentioned. And uh, mm-hmm. um, that was the biggest challenge. Right. <laughs> Convincing <laughs> us we would take an intern. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, as Abby was, uh, um, obviously I've been a writer for a long time and I was an English major at Malone um, also and, uh, and English and communications. And yeah, the, the importance of writing, good writing is so critical in so many fields, but I, I definitely have made a lot of use of my writing skills in, in marketing. So yeah, she pretty much just like, and hit, she hasn't started working on her book yet. So. No, well, yeah, my book, but the one that I'm never going to write, but anyway, <laughs> no. but yeah, Abby's messaging was on point to me. 100%. She sold me. <laughs> well, good sale. It was an good, excellent good sale. sale. 
And I got to meet the dogs on day one. That's right. Oh, yeah. That's the, right. The office dogs. Have we talked much about our dogs? I don't want to like. I don't think so. Uh, we'll have to. We won't go on trail. We won't go. But... We won't. We won't take a doggy trail. <laughs> But um, we'll have to we'll have to introduce our dogs on the podcast at some point. Um, but, you know, that's actually a great point that you are making about creative and critical thinking and and productivity, because that's something that's a perspective, I think, that you bring that maybe somebody who is majoring specifically in marketing might not. So tell us a little bit about your creative thinking process. For sure. Well, I've done some research on different patterns of thought such as design thinking, creative thinking, strategic thinking. And I think um, my creative thinking, it goes hand in hand with, with communication because I think in creative thinking, it's important to prioritize other people's perspectives. Um, It's a way of looking at something in a new way, really in a new light. And so I think being a creative writing major as well as an English major helps me with creative thinking a lot because I am constantly trying to look at things in a new way to write about it or to understand someone else's writing about those things. Um, Even just reading literature for fun or for school, you're constantly trying to adapt your perspective to the perspective of the characters or uh, whatever is happening in, in whatever you're reading. I think creative thinking really is kind of central to a lot of jobs and we don't even realize it. Yeah. Great point. What did you think of the marketing industry itself before you, you know, before you reached out to us? From an outsider. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) I mean, no, I, I think it's, I think we get as marketers. Yeah. Talking about getting other people's perspectives. Yeah. Right. 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 I think, um, being someone who had so little, experience or understanding of marketing, I kind of uh, assumed and just summarized it in my mind as being kind of like the the car salesman, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. of, oh, we're here to sell a product and we will do what we have to do to uh, make you want what we have. And, mm-hmm. you know, that's just, that's what marketing is. You're just selling things and maybe there's some deceit or trickery involved mm-hmm. at times. And um, I didn't I, ever really understand difference between even marketing firms versus marketing consultants and marketing strategists. And um, that's something that this internship has really opened my mind to that, you know, marketing, it's not all about just selling things. It's, it's about helping your clients with whatever their objective is and helping them with even just longevity of looking down the road and seeing what can we do to further your success and to help you grow your business and reach more people. I don't think I ever thought of marketing as being something particularly helpful so much as something that people do for their own gain mm-hmm. under the guise of helping others. Mm-hmm. I think I had a more negative view of marketing than I even realized until I started to learn what it really is about. Yeah. And you know, honestly, I think the industry has done a lot to create that uh, perception over the years, um, you know, of, of, like you said, trickery and deceit or, um, you know, just maybe not being, you know, completely honest, you know, about their products and services. But I feel like with the advent of maybe content marketing in particular, which is you know, um, has a lot of the writing, um, and the creativity involved in it. It's, it's kind of morphed into trying to, trying to educate, trying to share the information that people actually need to make decisions without the trickery involved. Um, I'm not saying that there aren't some companies that do that, of course, but, um, I think that's also part of, you know, working as, as a, you know, consultancy that we are, we, we are always looking for, you know, the kinds of clients that want to do the very best by, by their customers as well. So that's, you know, something that's super important to us. So I guess this is a little bit of an opportunity. We don't often get a chance to ask, you know, people of your age, Abby, about, you know, what's important to you and, you know, and that's kind of the research part about, you know, kind of getting into the heads of people that, that we're trying to reach. So I, I kind of saw this as a little opportunity to do some research. So tell us a little <laughs> bit about what about the mindset of, you know, folks right now in, in college, uh, realizing, of course, you know, you're 
I'm not going to cover all the mindsets. Um, people are, right. people are different, of course, but right. tell us a little bit about like what your, what your biggest wants, needs, fears are right now as you're, you know, at, at the point that you are at. Yeah, I can speak to that with my own perception and try to encapsulate um, more of a bigger mindset. But I would say right now, a lot of college students, at least that I know and for myself as well, we, we're we really just wanting job stability. Mm-hmm. And it can be hard when you have a major that isn't mm-hmm. always seen as something super stable, trying to, you know, justify why you're majoring in something that seems so useless, like creative writing, for example, um, trying to justify that to people and show them like, no, this is actually a very important skill. And this is something I can take and go far with in my life. You know, um, that's one of my early on fears that I struggled with, uh, when I first came to college and I was solely a creative writing major, I hadn't added the English part at that point. And I think as I've learned more and more, the more the more confident I have become in my skills and also in my decision to major in what I am. And I think that's just part of my personal process. But overall, I think in this time, it's there's a lot of uncertainty for not just the youth, but for the general population with COVID especially and then different political affiliations and elections happening. And there's just a lot of um, unknown right now. And even to think about what I'll be doing next semester mm-hmm. is more difficult than it would have been in the past um, for planning ahead and things like that because no one really knows what's happening. And I think in a way it's it's interesting to be in college during the year 2020 mm-hmm. and to see uh, things feel like they're really just falling apart everywhere. But then to look around and realize, you know, it's this way for everyone, not just for me. So I think there are fears and there are also, there's a reassurance there of knowing that everyone in college is, is going to have their doubts and worries. And then everyone in the world now has, has their own additional fears and worries. And I think um, being in college right now during this era is really an interesting, interesting perspective on that to see um, how different students are handling it. And um, yeah, so I would say right now, something a lot of people are craving in and out of college is just stability Mm -hmm. and knowing like, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And so in a time where everyone is lacking stability, it can be difficult and it can also be reassuring to know that you're not alone. That's good. I guess when you think about the kinds of messages then that you might hear from marketers about various, you know, various products. I mean, what kinds of messages are then really speaking to what you, what you need, the, like the stability, the, um, the assurance that I guess it's been a little bit overplayed, I think right now, but you know, we're all in this together, you know, I, you know, community, community, but Yeah. I mean, on a deeper level, you know, I guess what kinds of, you know, example, I don't know if you have any examples of some, you know, some messages that have been, you know, particularly meaningful to you from brands or, um, you know, organizations that you find compelling. That's a difficult question. I know, right? Did you give her this question at a time? <laughs> I, I, I asked her about products and messages and spaces that are resonating right now, but it, it is a hard question. I mean, I was even trying to think about, you know, um, brands that I thought have done a really good job of not overplaying the, we're in this together thing, but I think it's hard because there's so much noise Mm, Yeah, everywhere. Everyone feels like, I think when, when like we started dealing with the pandemic back in, you know, March of this year, like I think like brands were like rushing to get their message out of like how they're handling it. And I remember like getting my, like my email inbox was just like flooded Mm -hmm. and it was like overdone when in like a couple of days you were like over hearing from brands. Right. And also then to, to layer on and and not lightly, um, black lives matter, which, uh, was another layer, um, of messaging that started to then in the election. Right. Right. All these, right messaging on top of messaging, I think, um, 
you know, for the authenticity to shine through, I think has been, you know, has been a challenge. And I was, again, I'm still trying to, I'm still trying to think of a brand that I think that's done really well. Yeah. I mean, all I'm thinking of right now is as an example are like restaurants and things, mm. how they, every restaurant immediately had to tell everyone what they were doing mm -hmm. to combat COVID because as soon as it, you know, broke out, everyone was like, well, what are restaurants doing, you know, and things are closing down in some places and in other places things are open and it's like every drive through that you go to, you have to read their little signs about their precautions that they're taking. And, you know, you'll see, depending on where you are, people will have a mask on or they won't, or they'll be having you put your own debit card and instead of handing it to them and them swiping for you, it's just like, it's nothing that's a huge deal necessarily or like inconvenient. It's just weird how everything has changed suddenly and it's like businesses weren't prepared and everyone's just kind of looking at each other to see like, well, what are they doing and how can I combat COVID in my business? And um, that's something I noticed at least is just with restaurants especially and then stores, the procedures that they took with COVID with that idea of, oh, we're all in this together and kind of almost stealing from each other the ideas <laughs> of, of what to do in this situation. That brings up like an in interesting thought, like online versus offline, right? So offline, you had to like do a bunch of procedural changes that obviously, like you said, like going to a restaurant or going to a store is like, you have to know what the new procedure is. Whereas like if it's a, if it's a brand that's like mostly online, like what kind of changes, like maybe they're going to have like slower shipping or something, but like <laughs> right. th there's no contact anyway. So it, it's interesting just to think about the differences there and um, how brands have to deal online versus offline. Yeah, And I think even Abby's observation speaks to the very thing that she says she's wanting most, which is stability, consistency. Um, you know, and that's obviously not something that we've, um, as a culture, have been doing really well for a number of reasons. But yeah, I think the more that brands can, you know, stress things that are, you know, consistent, stable, and uh, meaningful, I think are the, you know, are the ones that are, are succeeding better in their, in their messaging right now. Um, Cause that's definitely the kind of message people are craving and they, and rightfully so. I think that that brings like an opportunity to light for small businesses and local businesses. I know it's obviously probably super challenging for any business right now to, to feel comfortable financially or stable. I think that now's the time that they have even more, a stronger appeal to that. Like, community, mm -hmm. you know, local, yeah. we're, we're, we're pulling together to support each other by, you know, supporting local businesses and putting that money back into the community. Yeah. Excellent. Well, on a fun note, where are students or people with your mindset hanging out online these days, Abby? So where, where, uh, where are the <laughs> online spaces that um, are most important. This is funny. To you. I, this is one thing I like about Abby. She's not on social media very much. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I think that she is, but we're just not like seeing it. <laughs> I have social media. I don't spend a lot of my time on it though. Yay. Okay. That's um, good. That's, yeah. I think you're atypical maybe, but that, I like that. Is that, <laughs> I don't know. Is that atypical or, um, are you, I, I would assume, like everyone else, you might be getting some fatigue from, like Annalisa mentioned earlier, lots of noise. I mean, I yeah. have been very fatigued by it and have stepped away. Um, how is that looking for you? Yeah, that's a good point. I think in general, I already didn't have a super high consumption of social media compared to a lot of my peers, maybe. But even now in this state of just chaos, in some ways that actually has increased my social media use because I want to know what's happening and I want to be informed. Mm -hmm. um, and so if I see something and I'm not really sure if that's 
if it's true, if it's believable, that causes me to look into it more. And then here I am researching something just because I saw a little thing about it on social media. And I think in a way it's helpful. Social media is in this time. And then and in, on the adverse side, it's, it can be damaging. It can be overwhelming. And then of course the whole idea of all media has a bias from whatever side it's coming from it's coming from a side and so I think it's also healthy sometimes to step back from social media and recognize like what a healthy amount of media consumption looks like Mm -hmm. versus just letting it over excuse me overrun your life a lot of people my age I think are on Twitter these days more so than a lot of the other um, social media apps um, Instagram has seen a bit of a decline. Facebook has been in decline for a while. But I also think the purpose of different apps are becoming more clearly different from each other, um, which wasn't something I had really noticed in the past. But I think depending on depending on what they want to get out of social media, it will depend on which app they use. Like, what about TikTok? I feel like if I was going to have fun <laughs> yeah. online, I would be, I would be on TikTok. <laughs> yeah, I I watch TikToks with my friends yeah. um, pretty often. Yeah, that one's fun. And it's like, it's kind of like Vine, which mm-hmm. um, yeah. passed yeah. away, sadly. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> with, with TikTok, it's, it started out as almost like an escape, I think, for mm-hmm. a lot of people to get away from what's happening and to make little funny things or creative things, Mm -hmm. um, just short videos of of what they're doing to share with each other. And I think it really exploded over quarantine when people were just kind of stuck in their house. And a lot of students, high school, middle school, college students, all of us at the same time seem to discover this app. And then it just kind of blew up almost overnight. So now that they have the audience, do you think like the, the platform is changing like its purpose a bit. I think so. Just like with any social media, what you see on it is catered to like what you click on and things like that. Yeah. Like depending so it's about on, advertising, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Depending on what you watch and what you like and interact with, that's what will stay on your feed. Mm-hmm. And so I think if you're looking for something other than funny videos, you'll find it. But even if you're not, TikTok is evolving just like everything else and mm. has become a platform for some people to speak about topics that really are they are passionate about, mm. um, such as coronavirus or Black Lives Matter or the election and other things we've talked about. Yeah. And I've seen it also um, and enter quite heavily into Instagram. And so I'm, you know, I'm seeing like a lot of TikTok. I'm seeing a lot of overlap mm-hmm. now where people yeah. are interacting on different platforms trying to bring their content from Cross yeah, yeah from one to the other to try and reach different yeah. audiences so but. that's always what happens with those platforms it's yeah. like they get an audience and then all of a you know not all of a sudden that's that's probably their plan from the beginning is to get enough uh, of an audience to make money for doing advertising uh we just watched the social dilemma uh, last weekend yeah. Uh, and that one, uh, is on Netflix. I don't know. Have you watched it, Abby? I've heard of it actually. It's on my list, but I haven't yeah. watched it. It was good. I mean, for us, it wasn't like super shocking cause we're kind of, uh, surrounded by that stuff in our industry, but yeah, there were some good things to take away from that and mm-hmm. just, uh, be reminded of how social media actually works. And I think too, being inside the industry. I mean, there's, you know, there's always value to being advocates within an industry. And I, I feel, you know, very compelled to, to, to be that kind of advocate for change in the business model that, that we see. And that was something that was highlighted very strongly in, in the social dilemma was um, the fact that the business model itself, the, the commodity that essentially is being sold, which is people's attention, you know, Mm -hmm. people themselves. Yeah, we're um, the product. Right, we're the product. Right. Um, and the business model needs to change. So um, I, th- I think that's definitely something that's, you know, key. And actually, um, we usually finish up each podcast talking a little bit about what are you learning and, and or what's bringing you joy or, um, you know, what's giving you energy right now. Um, and I think that idea for me, like how... And, you know, Annalisa and I in this industry be, 
you know, advocates for a change in, in the business model that we see um, is something that I've been mulling over. I mean, I'm, you know, not ready to take to the streets yet with my, with any, with any signs or anything, but, you know, how can we be that kind of advocate um, as marketers? So that's something that I've been, been mulling over. Um, I don't know if uh, Annalisa, Abby, do you guys have anything to share about what's bringing you energy, what you're learning? For me, I think as I'm closing out the semester, getting nearer to winter break, I'm, I've been really focused on summarizing my courses in a sense with finals coming up and just kind of seeing what is it that I've learned and what am I taking away from this semester. And I think this semester has been interesting for many reasons, but one of them is this is the first internship I've ever had. I didn't even anticipate how much I would learn from it before I started it. And as I'm closing out the semester and we're closing the internship soon, I'm just thinking like of what I'm going to take with me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been looking into a lot of things that I didn't realize would be interesting until now. So I've been researching like artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, yeah, there we go. Different different um, thinking processes and marketing strategies and things that I maybe would have thought were boring before I looked into them. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so I just started a book called The Power of Habit and it's uh, subtitle is Why We Do What We Do in Life and in Business. It took a little while in the introduction. I was kind of like, okay, what's Let's get to the point. They were, you know, they were using a story to to kind of uh -oh. get your attention. And sometimes stories lose me. I'm just like, just get to the point. <laughs> but, you can uh, see that she's like a different kind of thinker. <laughs> yeah. yeah, than me. <laughs> right, right. But anyway, I I did make it into the the first chapter, and um, so far it's it's very interesting, uh, and I'm excited to continue into into the book. There's a couple of let me see i have it up here on my phone a couple of chapters that sound interesting starbucks in the habit of success when willpower becomes automatic i don't know that i agree with that but yeah former we'll starbucks barista um the power of a crisis how leaders create habits through accident and design well, that sounds germane yeah. so mm -hmm. um yeah if you anyone gets a, a chance to check it out i think it's probably a book worth worth your time what are you reading right now, Abby? I bet you're reading something um, good, but so that's not college-y. <laughs> it's not yeah, for school, yeah. right? I've been reading a lot of James Baldwin. Ah, yeah. Um, he's one of, he's yeah. one of my favorite American authors, mm -hmm. and I um, a lot of his work is very prevalent for today. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, that's great. Um, yeah. Nice. What is his most known work? It's not coming to me at the moment. Um, probably go tell it on the mountain. Okay. Okay. I think that was his first novel. I could be wrong. All right. But I think that was one of his most famous, most successful. I just finished Giovanni's Room, which is a different fiction novel. All right. Really insightful. Um, yeah, I love all of his work that I've read, though. I need to get into fiction. I've been working on that for all of my how, life. Yeah, I was going to say, how old are no, you? No, I'm not uh, doing the number. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, not, yeah. I'm not getting into that trap. Yeah, Come sadly, on. Abby, <laughs> did you know that Annalisa is a nonfiction kind of yeah. gal, kind of dame? Yeah. So um, it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, on the other hand, am reading some fiction because I am a fiction lover. Of and course. I know. I'm reading Half Broke Horses by Jeanette Walls. And um, this is actually my second book by Jeanette that I'm reading and I love her style. It's, um, well, it, it's biographical in nature, um, about her family. And this is, uh, happens to be a story about her grandmother, but I just, um, kind of love the insight that she brings to what would otherwise be untold stories about people's lives that are, you know, I think a lot of times we get the idea that, you know, we have to accomplish most Jen's amazing getting teary-eyed everybody oh, I am not. <laughs> yes, you are. oh my gosh I feel like that we have to accomplish great things or whatever be you know um amazing but actually people's everyday lives are pretty darn interesting so yeah I like yeah. that so that's what I'm reading 
Same, and you can summarize it for me when you're done, and then I can be like, no. yes, just I no. agree. <laughs> no, no, you have to do the hard work. You have to read the book. Hey, I'm just an ordinary person. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, write your story See what then. I did there? Oh, yeah, right. Well, write your story then. <laughs> or have Abby write it. She could be your, she could be your, right. um, your biographer. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, thanks, Abby. I think this is one of our best episodes. Absolutely. Most interesting. Absolutely. Well, thank you. Thanks for having me on the podcast. Yeah. Oh, now um, you have something to take home to your family and be like, yeah, this is, see, this is what my internship yeah. in summary. Yeah. I know. You'll I be know. like, I'm famous now. I was well, on the Data Dames Marketing <laughs> Podcast. <laughs> right? All, all five people that listen. Right. <laughs> well, I, I, we don't know what the future is going to hold with with everything our hope is that abby will be back with us in yeah. the spring for more learning yeah. and more sharing and she's we could do a uh, part two episode i know i was gonna say if if anybody who is listening if you can't tell you will you you should know now exactly why we hired her yeah, so she's, absolutely she's pretty awesome so thanks abby thank you thank thanks, you abby. that wraps up another episode of meaningful measurable marketing If you manage marketing, sales, customer service, or operations for a growing small business, we hope you found this podcast helpful. Any tool, resource, or article we reference can be found in the show notes for this episode. And if you haven't already subscribed to our podcast or left us a review, we hope you'll do both today. I'm Jen Carroll. My co-host, Annalisa Hilliard, and I are marketing strategy consultants, and together we are the Data Dames of Data Dames Marketing. Learn more about us at datadamesmarketing.com. Thank you.